from their recommendation, what uh, will be the future direction of research that will be conducted? Okay, anyone from, yes, from the languages. Oh, yes, ma'am, dapat ikaw kanina, no? Okay, after her, after the CON second group. <laughs> okay, um, we were told to uh, find where are the four important elements in the introduction. So the title of uh, the, the article that was assigned to us is uh, Attitudes of Saudi Nursing Students Toward Nursing Research by Jehad Ohalabi. So this is a very good uh, article. And we identified uh, two known problems. The, the author says that the previous study supported the value of research in improving care. And that is one of the known problem. The other one, he said that, however, the lack of exposure to research courses was a barrier to using research in practice. So that is the thing that uh, hinders the nursing students uh, towards their uh, love for nursing research. Now, another known problem is uh, stated as, however, literature reported that BSc students were not adequately equipped to analyze research studies or to use the, the re results in practice. So they don't know how to use uh, the results of their researches into their clinical practice. Now, we know that the unknown problems is other known as gaps and uh, the author said that the lack of studies was located to date on the attitudes of Saudi nursing students toward nursing research. So, yun mismo yung title. Yun yung mismo na gap niya, mismo yung title niya. Uh, the lack of such information prompted the researcher to conduct this study since insight into students' attitudes will assist their facilitators to promote interest in conducting research and utilizing results among students. So the purpose of the study, uh, the author said that he has to investigate the attitudes of these nursing students toward uh, research at the College of Nursing located in three campuses which are affiliated with the Health Sciences University in three regions of uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Furthermore, the study determined whether demographic and educational background characteristics influence students' attitudes toward research. And lastly, after investigation of such, the, the author said that the results of the study would be used to propose some suggestions and strategies to promote the students' interest in research. So this is something to do with the conclusion of the study. Ano yung recommendations natin? Ano yung maitutulong natin as a social responsibility to the community or to the local where we did the studies? Because be, the study, because they are to be the sole beneficiaries of the results and findings of the study that we did in a particular uh, local. Thank you. Thank you. So what insight can we draw from what Ma'am Malapad uh, mentioned about the title? So we cannot simply uh, formulate a title without having read thoroughly or extensively the literature. So only then can we propose a title if we have thoroughly read the literature and uh, we're able to point out or establish the gaps. Okay, ma'am Kathleen. Hi, the study assigned to us was entitled, is entitled Enhancing the Interpretability of the Overall Results of an International Test of English Language Proficiency. So in this case, the study focused on TOEFL Jr test of English as a foreign language. Basically, uh, what this study is about is how can they help uh, make it easier for those who are interpreting and taking the exam to see uh, what do their scores mean. 
So what is known here is that oftentimes when we take scores, like for us when you take an English score, there are different modalities, reading, speaking, listening, writing, uh, grammar, comprehension. What is easy is that uh, you see the scores. But the, uh, and most descriptors only describe how do this uh, testers do in reading, in writing, in specific language modalities. What is unknown is that there's no uh, descriptors or performance descriptors given to provide a holistic view of how this uh, takers do overall. So the problem that they wanted to address is that, and their purpose is that they can provide descriptors that would enhance uh, how are the test results to be interpreted, okay? So because when you take the test, you get the overall scores, numerical scores, but what do they mean, okay? And uh, here, what uh, they said that uh, most published research, the gap is that published researches on the development of performance levels and performance level descriptors is far less frequent for overall scores than for section scores. Most often, published research are done only on the description of how the test takers do for specific language modalities for reading, but they don't give uh, an overall picture of their skill as an, of their English proficiency. So with this test, uh, this test actually only tries to help enhance. What they came up with is just five levels and what descriptors one can use to provide a global, a global characterization of examinee performance after they have taken the test. That's, that's the result because their, their main focus is only to enhance the interpretability of test scores, overall test scores. The recommendations for further research, there are actually four. First, work will need to involve analysis of cognitive processing, because although they know the scores and they have the descriptors, they don't know what happens to the test taker's head while they're taking the test. Second is further validation for the content of descriptors is required through the participation of teachers and assessment developers, not just those who took the test, because this involved three, over 3,000 from different countries test takers. So they wanted to involve the teachers and assessment developers. Third one, their study did not provide evidence on the extent to which score users find the descriptors informative and supporting the intended uses of TOEFL Junior. So meaning they don't know yet if the descriptions that they came up with proved to be informative to the test takers and the assessors as well. Because their goal is to enhance the interpretability, but a uh, study was not yet done if what they did was actually helpful. And the fourth one, it relates to policy decisions with regard to selecting the number of reporting levels. And that because this involves statistical as well as policy considerations, just like when they use the five instead of four, why not four, why not six? It has something to do not only with accuracy and clarity, but with the policy, uh, policy of the test and also for those, because you know, when we take um, English as a foreign language, sometimes who, who has to dictate which test to take. So also the policy, not only the results have to be taken in consideration. Right, so from that study, uh, we have learned that uh, Research has a very important role to inform decisions and policy making. Yeah, so, so it's from there that uh, we, we gained information about the future direction of research in the recommendation or conclusion, right? It's through the conclusion, right? Okay, so we still have time, so let's have, who else? Psychology. And theology pa, di ba? Theology, very short yan. Kasi sanay na sanay yan silang mag-spot ng ano eh, 
pag nag-analyze yan sila, grabbing evidences. Uh, sorry, yeah. It's, it's supposed to be easier to present uh, using that one, but it's not working well for us. So sorry for the inconvenience. Good morning, everyone. The title of the study is Data-Driven Methods to Diversify Knowledge of Human Psychology. Now, the known knowledge in psychology is psychology is to understand human behavior. But then nowadays, the dilemma is to consider culture in understanding human behavior. So this study tested the knowledge of Darwin's theory, particularly understanding facial reaction. So to make it simple, they actually conducted a study across cultures such as in Eastern Asia and in Western countries. And what they found out is that not all people are happy have the same facial re reactions across culture, which means that if I'm going to show you the picture, uh, mostly Asians, they have the same kind of facial reactions. They're, they're, they call it, the next page will show you that their upper lip may raise, their nose may wrinkle if they're happy, but it's the same in Eastern, in Eastern countries, but not in Western countries. So the challenge is how to represent psychology in understanding human behavior if across culture they have diversified result. So in this study, the result is basically telling the reader that in understanding psychology or particular human behavior or as simple as facial reaction, we have to analyze completely across culture and to consider their, their setting because it well represents than just concluding their facial reaction from a certain culture. So I think that the goal is to have a diversified knowledge, but at the same time, a unified understanding of human behavior, specifically in psychology, such as facial reactions. Meron po ditong happy surprise. If you will read this article, I hope we can flash it, pero wala pala. Meron pong... The techniques they, they used is the integration of physics. So they used the knowledge called psychophysical method, which I'm not particular. The physics, because they use psychophysical methods, uh, it says here, the psychophysical methods aim to measure the parameters of a stimulus, such as vision, hearing, taste, or touch, in relation to their emotion. So if you're happy, is it seen in your facial reaction that you're really happy? If, you're, if you cannot understand, is your facial reaction uh, visible or clear that you cannot understand? Does it show? So this is the, that's the problem. So they used physics to help us understand the facial reaction, psychophysics. Yes, ma'am. The direction of future research here is to always integrate culture in understanding even the simple component of facial expressions. Mm -hmm. Conclude, yes, ma'am. Include culture. It says here, uh, we should not overlook the inextricable in uh, role, or not overlook the inextricable role of culture in shaping human perception, thought, and action. Hello. Their study is very interesting because it says here, not all people are happy have the same facial reaction, right? Or not all people are feel fearful have the same facial reaction. So if you notice, the ones with blue color, it represents Western countries. And the one in red color represents Eastern countries. Now, uh, I wish I have a laser. But then the happy face, very little lang siya sa Western, pero medyo, medyo a little bit, Madame is Eastern. Now look at the facial reaction of someone who is afraid or fear. Now the facial reaction of Western, which is representative ng blue, konti ilang po siya, if you notice. Right? Which means, hindi talaga siya based kasi sa studies, Western people have that kind of facial reaction. 
but it doesn't represent the Eastern culture. So the challenge is to unify the diversified knowledge. So therefore, adapt and consider other culture in understanding even facial reactions. Hmm, okay. Ayan po. All right. Um, if I may ask you, what the what element in the Picot's framework oh, did you identify? Okay, Picot's population yes, is it we the, have is found it a gap of population, gap of outcomes? I guess from the gap of testing knowledge, or specifically the previous knowledge theory, they mentioned here Darwin's theory. So, so they tested Darwin's theory. It's from different interventions. Yes, ma'am. So oh. it's a different intervention that was used. Yeah. So because if you will be able to identify the kind of gap, uh, it will be really systematic. It shows systematicity. Yeah. Uh, the system. <laughs> All right. Thank you from psychology, ma'am Myrtle. And uh, who else? Uh, music or theology. Yeah, theology tinawag natin kanina. They have, I think, a book review or... So even book reviews and the uh, article or, or um, literature reviews have to establish research, research gaps as well. So you may use that one to identify your notes. Yan, Pastor. Yes. Pwede na po. Nanayos na. Yan. Yung notes nila. Yeah, please tell us the strategies you used in identifying those parts. Uh, what, what were your clues in saying that this is uh, the gap or this is the problem? Uh, actually, the problem here is a problem about interpretation of the Bible. All right. There seems to be a contradiction between the interpretation of first century theologians and today's interpreters of the Bible. They have actually parang fall away from the original way of understanding the Bible in such a way that the message of salvation right, in such a way that the message of salvation were being presented in a much different form than actually depicted or described in the scriptures. Parang ganito kasi, mas malapit, di ba? Mas malapit, parang mas first century interpreters Okay, they have a better way of understanding the Bible. Uh, there's a line of idea going, going back from the first century up to our, uh, up to our time, uh, in our time. The word actually is historical. The approach of the early theologians and scholars, historical approach. All right? But the problem is, in the interpretation of the Bible, there was a shift, a change. So from historical, throughout the years, throughout the years, scholars have shifted into this, what we call historical critical. And take note of the word critical. Here in the interpretation of the scriptures, they have actually focused on scientific method. This was influenced by what we call enlightenment. All right? And so, in this article, in this article, a sort of research, the author actually made a survey right throughout the years on how to interpret the scripture, the scriptures or the Bible. And so in the end, ito yung kanyang proposal. After making a survey of how interpreters of the Bible interpreted the Bible.
In the summary, in the conclusion, he reiterated the purpose of this article. Take note of the word social, social historical worldviews. Socio historical worldviews in interpreting the Bible. Again, the word historical. But take note of the word social. Perhaps you'll be asking, what actually is the position of the Adventists in interpreting the Bible? Our position is historical grammatical. Though this is quite close because this is social historical worldview, this is a kind of biblical interpretation by which it is not the main source but based on people. Anthropological way of understanding the Bible. This is very much contextualized. So that is actually the purpose of this author. And he is trying to call theologians and biblical scholars to, to dialogue and to convene together so that they can come up with this kind of interpreting the Bible. Okay? And that is social, historical way of interpreting the Bible. But again, though this is quite good than historical critical, ours actually is historical grammatical. If I may ask you, what is it that you want to advance in the body of knowledge by reading that article? Uh, what I would like, what I appreciate about, about this actually is, I would like you to know that this is how Asians, Asians interpret, interpret the Bible, very much contextualized. And there's, there, we have a problem actually, uh, in our accreditation with Atiseya. Mm -hmm. Why? They want us to interpret the Bible this way. Mm -hmm. Social, historical, which is actually culture, culture, uh, cultural, parang, uh, yung bang focus or centered on culture. That's why we have what we call context contextualization and flexibility, understanding culture. But you see, the Seventh-day Adventist sticks actually to the principle of biblical interpretation being true to historical and grammatical account of the scriptures. Yun po ang aming problem actually. And so, mm, yeah, uh, in, in the context of the Seventh-day Adventists, parang we try to understand how actually they interpret the Bible. And we try to compare the way they interpret and the way we interpret the Bible. And I think still, we have the best, <laughs> if not the better way, okay. of understanding the scriptures. Okay. Please publish that, Dr. Amoral, so that uh, you will also contribute to the body of knowledge regarding your stand on that. All right. I think we have, everyone has presented, unless there's one more who wanted to, oh, Sir Wynn. Sir Wynn, IT. Yeah, okay. Business. What about COB? Yeah, we have interesting topics from COB actually. Is there anyone from the College of Business? Ma'am. <laughs> right, so the last. Are you from the College of Business, sir? Oh, from IT, from CST. Right, I was going to call the CST as well. I know that there are many of you who are ready. But yeah, let's have him. Where's your paper, sir? Akinoha. Ah, we cannot show it. See, okay lang po. Uh, the paper that was given to us, to me, actually because my companions were not around, is about stamps, collecting, and the standards. So the main uh, number one problem was, uh, ano nga po yun? Number uh, one. The identifying the problem. Identifying the problem. The problem uh, was about standards. So the author was saying that there are so many standards in representing metadata of uh, old stamps. These are stamp collectors, and they want to digitize it, and they want to make it available on the libraries and collectors in art societies and museums. And many different organizations are actually doing this but they are having, they are, since they don't know that the others are doing it, they're all doing it differently. And the problem is that the standards, so when you browse the other collection, you browse the other collection, you browse the other collection, 
there are different ways of looking at it. And so that is the known. The known is that you, there are many standards existing. The unknown is how to make them compatible or how, how to make them all uh, uh, share each other's knowledge. And uh, the, the solution that uh, is possible is to create another standard. But in the IT world, the nice thing is, make a sabihana, the nice thing about standards is that there are so many of them to choose from. Therefore, creating another standards will just create another more standard. But anyway, uh, in the IT world, the standards also help even competing companies. They create standards so that they can interoperate. But these are art societies. They are not competing. So there is more probability that they will agree on a standard so that they will all benefit from sharing information with each other. Yun lang po ang naintindihan ko sa paper. So that's the last. We have to wrap up what we have learned just now uh, in relation to how we are going to um, integrate what we have learned in our classes. Uh, may I ask Dr. Saban? Yes, please. Especially on how we can integrate our learning today in our classes. Especially in the graduate school. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I believe that the learnings we have had today are very are relevant to all of us, especially for the graduate faculty. I believe that we will be able to integrate uh, the, the teaching of research gap by encouraging our students to, to read more literatures, by integrating in our design for our classes um, materials, encouraging our students to read journal articles, especially those that are relevant to their fields. So for example, we have students coming from public health, education, business, and other fields. Uh, we can encourage them to, to read more studies because it, it would be very difficult for them to come up with, with titles and problems and much more identifying research gap if they are not well read. So that is one thing that needs to be, um, to be um, improved in, in our practices. So we can start by doing that in the undergraduate programs as well, by, in, by in integrating reading materials and journal articles and let, letting them summarize uh, materials from what uh, summarized what they have read. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Aklan, for that um, timely and presentation of, of research gap. I hope we will be using that. We will be using that in the, uh, our future uh, uh, topics. Now, as you notice in our program, we, the next topic is research design. Uh, the purpose of this seminar is for us to integrate research in our classes. So next meeting or next time, that will be February 23, please bring your course syllabus. Now you have topics, we have topics in our course syllabus. This is your assignment. From that topic, you identify research topic or a problem that we can um, work as research, so research topic. Because if you notice the schedule, we have research design. And from that topic, we are going to generate the possible research design that you are going to use um, for our students. So that can be a group. In one, co uh, one course, it can be a one research or two. Or in the graduate school, we can have three, it depends. So we are going to facilitate what are the type of designs you can use or possible that you can use in, in that topic. So you med tech, uh, other, other courses, you bring to us here our topic and we will try to help each other, you brainstorming. And then, so notice we have research design, then instrumentation. From that topic, we are going to develop a, a research paper we are going to 
uh, teach you how to make instruments under instrumentation. So, tuloy tuloy. And then, we will be teaching you how to analyze the data. We can assist you. And at the end of this uh, research enhancement seminar, we'll have a, a paper that will be, um, you, we will use an IMRAD format, a publishable paper for us to publish. So, to, sunod sunod ito. So, take note, you are going to develop your own topic. We are going to have our brainstorming here. We are going to identify the different designs that you can use. And supposedly, uh, hoping that that design is feasible for one SEM. Kasi yun lang yung kayang gawin ng estudyante. So that is the purpose of this seminar. Not, not writing a thesis, but integrating research in our classes. Yung simple lang that can be uh, pwedeng i-implement for one SEM. Not for one year or two years, because that's the purpose why we are here today. God bless and uh, happy Sabbath. Shall we all stand for the closing prayer? Dear loving Father in heaven, this morning we would like to thank you for the privilege of learning. Thank you for this seminar workshop that was conducted for us, Lord, to uh, enhance our teachings. Lord, we are thankful that through this uh, seminar workshop we were able to uh, know how to find the research gaps. So we pray that that will help us to implement this as we integrate research in our classes and as we strive for excellence. Please be with us as we go out from this place and uh, may you help us prepare ourselves for the Sabbath, most especially for your soon return. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.